I want to take a moment to talk about the piece that um, that I created so that you guys can understand where it came from. This is episode two of the multi-part Conflicted Coward docuseries. After listening to the George Floyd video, I saw something that basically laid out what he said. I remember reading it and just the same emotions just came right back to how I felt when I watched the video. I wanted to convey something that was powerful and strong and that would impact people and inspire them to change and to inspire them to think about something else while also conveying or communicating the message um, that you feel when you read his words. So this piece, there are two conflicting sides. One very kumbaya, let's be loving and come together side that wants to just say, okay, let's all work this out. There's this other side of me that's also wanting to take action and show force and power. The black and white background for the piece was, of course, this is a racial thing, right? You're, you're in this spectrum. These are two polarizing ends of that spectrum. And so the background is basically talking to everyone and how this affects them. The whole movement behind what's going on right now with the police brutality and racial injustice in America is the Black Lives Matter movement. And so on the white side of the painting is written Black Lives Matter in a glossy pearl color on the white. So you're able to see it at a particular angle, but it's not popping out at you. When I think about that statement, Black Lives Matter, it's like I'm asking someone else to acknowledge me. And I'm wanting someone else's acknowledgement in order to almost validate myself or to validate my color of people. I think when you're asking for something, it's an evidence or a demonstration of your lack of power. That statement is not directed towards black people. And we know that our lives matter. And so that conversation is directed at people that are white or don't share our, our values, right? And that's why it's on the white side. So the Black Lives Matter statement, when it resonates with me, it just exposes how much power I don't have. Um, I'm a strong believer that power is, is taken, it's not given. The, the other part of the painting, the background says we are all humans. And I've made the painting so that when you look at it, it reads both vertically and horizontally as three individual statements. We are all black, all lives, and humans matter. And we are all humans. No matter what you are, you came from black. We all came from Africa. We are all descendants of the cradle of humanity. As I was going through the piece, I started running out of letters. And a part of this painting is to showcase that this is the state of black America to a large degree. We don't have the resources and we're left to make do with what we have. The name of the painting is called 46 Please. That's how many times George Floyd plead for his life. I think that when I listen to you know, George Floyd's words, it feels like we're continuing to do that with the protests in the street. They are pleas, pleas for our life, pleas for our justice, pleas for acknowledgement. When we can't breathe, that we stand up and go out there and protest in the street. And just like at the end, you see the life coming out of, you know, George Floyd. I believe as time goes on, we need to stop pleading. We need to elevate our consciousness. And that is the idealistic part of me that wants to believe that we can change the hearts and minds of people and appreciate the differences that we have with each other because we're all humans and to be able to view each other in that way. Until then, Blacks in America, we need to go back to where we came from. One of the things that 
it's very interesting to me a lot of times when I talk to black Americans is their their desire to not want to connect or to be African. They want to be black Americans. If you're black American and that's all you see yourself as, then your history starts in America and you start off as a slave. And I believe that knowing your identity plays a huge role in understanding who you are. And I want to share a little bit about what that's done for me in going and living in Africa and being there and understanding my roots really in a deep way, how it's literally changed my perspective and the responsibility I feel like I have for what I leave behind for my descendants. In episode three of the Conflicted Coward docuseries, I will share a perspective that allows us to start planting the seeds of power.